Manhattan over there, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, my fault, man. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I got one more hour, but so, so sorry for the delay. That's all good, dude. Fucking no, no fucking worries, man. Awesome, awesome, man. All man, right, thanks well, a lot for having us on the show, man. That's fucking killer. Hey, no problem, brother. Well, Frank Garcia, what the fuck is going on in the world right now of Asphyxiator? Well, we're, we're getting ready to do um, a big festival in July, uh, Chicago Domination Fest uh, number four, which is put on by uh, Miguel Gorgrinder, who is uh, he's the lead vocalist for the band. Um, so that's happening at The Wire. Um, it's going to be a shitload of bands on it. I believe we're playing on a Saturday. And uh yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fucking badass fucking event. We we did uh we did the one last year and it was uh that was pretty fucking badass dude playing with a bunch of fucking kick ass bands. Uh and this year it's gonna be off the hook. I think it's almost almost sold out. I think it's got like uh maybe fifty more tickets to go. You know. But you got bands like uh Embalmer, um uh, Matter Static, uh, Sarcophagy, uh, a bunch of other ones. I'm trying to trying to name off the top of my head, but that that's that's uh, what we're preparing to do right now, man. You know, so we're looking looking forward to that. Very cool, dude. Well, yeah. for for people out there that don't know much about you guys, man, how long have you been been doing this, and how exactly did it get started? Okay, well. Um, uh, I've been with him uh, for the past two years. Um, that he was on his own for uh, for almost ten years. So <clears throat> I'll say back in 2005, he was um, he was working on material by himself, and then he had uh, a bunch of people go through it. You know, uh, so he would have random guitar players, random bass players uh, go through the project and. I think for the most part, it's always been uh, like a drum machine type of thing. So he never really had an issue with drummers. So he just basically got whoever he could to either fill in for bass or fill in for guitar. Um, and that's how it was for a very, very long time. Um, and then come in 2015, he put on the first Domination Fest. Um, and he needed a guitar player. So... He contacted me, um, said, well, you know, can you, can you figure out the songs and, and play for the, you know, the, the first festival in, in about a month? So I had a month to learn the songs and, uh, we, uh, we asked our friend Raphael to, uh, fill in for bass. And that's basically the first incarnation of, uh, the first solid lineup of Asphyxiator from that moment on. Um, and I decided to stay on and record, uh, the first album. Um, and then we played, uh, several other shows after that. So we've, we've been like, the three of us have been the most consistent, uh, lineup since, uh, back in 2005. But, uh, he's, he's the one that's been pretty much, uh, doing it for, for quite a while. So for me, it's only been two years. And same thing for Raphael, the bass player. It's, it's only been two years for him too. Um, um, and we, we, we like where it's going. Um, we are uh, attempting to try to get a, a real drummer. Um, so we, we have several people in mind right now and hopefully we'll, um, you know, the, 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 maybe even by this gig, we might have somebody, uh, to fill in that spot. Uh, for now, it's just going to be us three. And, uh, you know, we got, we got the album, we got, uh, we got some new hoodies, actually some new hoodies that, uh, these guys I uh, worked on uh, this past week. So we got some brand new merch uh, that just recently made it to the, uh, the internet store that we got set up for the band. Uh, so those are pretty sick. Um, and then, and of course, the fest. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much the basic story of Asphyxiator. I'm sure that Miguel will probably have more to say, but I think the, uh, neither Miguel or Raphael are available. I did mention to him that we were going to be on, but, you know. I'm not sure what the got going on. Right on, man. As far as your uh, influences, what would you say like really influenced you to do what you do, man? Um. Well, as as far as 
for myself, um, you know, I I grew up listening to uh, a lot of old school death metal. Uh, I grew up listening to uh, more of an angel, uh, sinister uh, death. Um, you know, back back in my day, those those bands were like uh, in the underground. They were pretty predominant at that time, back in the nineties. Um, so, as for me, that's pretty much where I derive a lot of my influence from. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, they kind of morphed, you know, throughout the, the years, you know, like now it's more like cryptopsy, um, kind of think of some other, some other bands that are, that would be, be part of, uh, what we're trying to do. I mean, I, I know that Miguel calls it like slam, it calls it slam death metal, but we, you know. For the most part, like yeah, I mean there might be some slam in, the, you know, slamish type riffs in there, but uh, you know I keep it more towards the brutal death metal aspect of it, you know, and so I like to keep it more brutal death metal than slam. Um, although we do have, you know, a little bit of a tinge of that in there, but we're not fall out just slam, you know. Um, Mortician is another band I think mine. Um, Cannibal Corpse, um, band, 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 you know, around that, that time frame. Um, as for Raphael, I know that he listens to a, a lot of different uh, styles. Um, I know he listens to Arch Spire and um, a couple other uh, other groups that he, he brings like a different flavor to the to the mix. Um, uh, Miguel is really into like you know, more brutal grind aspect of it. So that's kind of what, like, he, he brings to the table. Um, there's, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's like a wide variety as far as underground is concerned. Uh, you know, but at the moment, like, you know, having, having a drum machine is, you know, it, it is somewhat limiting to what we can do, you know. So I'm hoping that if we, you know, we do go forward with a drummer, then, you know, that person will probably bring another a whole different aspect to um, to our, the influence of the group. Right on, dude. As far as the band name, Asphyxiator, how did you guys come up with that? Is there a story behind it or anything? Uh, I, I guess if there is, uh, I think Miguel will probably know more about that because that's the name he had uh, to begin with. Um, I know that I, 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 he had a different name for the band uh, in the beginning, which, you know, in my opinion, really wasn't uh it wasn't really a good name you know um i'm not trying to look it up now because i forgot i forgot exactly what it was i think it was something like yeah it, it, he called it gods of gore you know which is uh, you know i don't know it just it doesn't really to my ears really doesn't sound that great but i don't know where it morphed to asphyxiator as far as where he got that idea from you know but it over the years, that seems to stick, you know. I know there is there is another, like, I think there was a thrash metal asphyxiator somewhere out in the, you know, out of the country somewhere, but I don't know anything about them. Um, so as far as, like, what we do, I mean, the, the name kind of fits, um, and uh, we, we kind of stuck with it. But he, he, he would probably know more of us as far as where, where all that, you know, is headed, you know. Yeah, I, I try to. I'll try to get. Uh, can you get multiple people on the on the show talking or? Uh, well, no. I no, mean, just one. Okay, just one. Okay. Uh, unless you guys w was to call in like both at the same time. I mean, I don't know if you had a. Uh... Oh no, it's no big deal. I just I was trying to see where these guys are at. <laughs> but I, I see I see that our bass player did promote the promote the say like uh like a few minutes ago so. I know he's probably listening to it, which is cool, you know. Right on, man. I know, I know he won't mind. <laughs> as far as like some of these song titles and these fucking uh, the lyrical themes, dude, you got to tell me about some of this shit, man. Fucking, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking here at the fucking record, man. Fucking, uh, you got fucking bound, gagged, and beaten into submission, suicidal oh. asphyxiation fetish, uh, hallucinogenic cat cadaver. A t autopsy, dude. What the fuck, man? What, what's going on here, man? Tell me about this shit. <laughs> oh man. Well, <laughs> I, 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I gotta, I gotta say for the, for the most part, like that is Miguel. Like he wrote, um, like all those, all those titles and, and lyrics. That's all him. Um, and it's derived from his passion of like, uh, he, he loves the band Gorgasm, Mortician, you know, kind of, he loves all these, you know, really like mm-hmm. all out gore brutality type bands, you know, and I yeah. think that that, that, that's where he gets a lot of that from, um, which is it's fine, you know. Um, and that's that's what he's, in, he's, he's into. I mean, not not in reality, of course, because <laughs> he doesn't do any of that stuff. Of course, you know. What I mean, he ain't like he ain't going out there like fucking choking and punching and killing. <laughs> real, he ain't doing any of that in real life at all. Um, so he so he that's that's kind of where he gets it from it's from from those influences and i think the some of the long titles actually uh, are reminiscent to me of like what demolition hammer used to have like on, on their you know you know how they have these long like kind of like they they pull them out of a out of a, a clinical surgical book type long names and shit like three word names i think that's yeah, well, like old school words. carcass and shit, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where you got like these three word names that you're like, holy shit, you know, like fucking, you know, this weird stuff like that. Um, and and that's fine for for that moment, you know, for for what it was, you know. Um, and quite recently, me and me and uh, Raphael, since we're the new, newcomers to the project. Um, we have talked about like going in a different direction as far as like lyrical content is concerned is to maybe like change it up a little bit you know because you you kind of see that quite a bit you know like you you can you can kind of you know get a gist of you know brutal death metal and and those type of lyrics can be actually put to a lot of bands if you think about it you know that are going in that route so you know we're trying to steer away from from that type of uh, content and then do something maybe a little bit different, you know, um, I mean, maybe something that's not as, as brutal or, or uh, you know, like killing and torturing and all that stuff, you know, like just kind of getting away from that, you know, maybe, maybe talking more, uh, more like realistic subjects, I guess, you know, something that's more, you know, I guess not as, not as gory uh, and stuff, because you can still, you know, you can still be brutal, and, and come up with lyrics that are, you know, uh, different, you know, that, that you don't have to be killing, <laughs> you don't have to be yeah. torturing people or anything, you know, you can, you can, and you can still be quite brutal, you know, so, uh, the good thing is, you know, our, the, the bass player, he's, he, he's, he's a writer, he writes a lot of, uh, a lot of poetry and stuff like that, and he's actually come up with, like, uh, uh, overabundance of lyrics uh, throughout the past couple of months. So he's been um, he's been compiling like a bunch of different uh, topics that are different. You know, more like a, more like a psychological aspect of like you know people who are tormented by schizophrenia or you know or who have you know clinical mental problems or depression. You know, so he's deriving all those all these topics and he's writing off those topics. You know, and song formats, you know, so that, you know, the next album is probably going to be, you know, derived from those things as opposed to what it is now, you know. Uh, and, and, I, and I think it's a good thing, you know. Cause, That's uh, cool. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, you know not, not to, you know, knock on Miguel, you know, I mean, that's what he likes and that's, that, that's fine, you know, but seeing as like we're now three people so we all can, I can interject our thoughts into the, uh, into what we're creating, you know, and kind of, you know, and I, I think people will dig it, you know, because, I mean, you can only go so far, you know, with a certain topic, you know, where you're like, okay, like, you know, you know, how far can you take something, you know, before it gets old, you know, it's like, okay, here's another song about the same thing, it's like, well, you know, we do something, something different, you know? Hell yeah, man, that's cool, man, yeah. Fuck, dude. Speaking of schizophrenic, man, we we actually have some DJs uh, here that that work at MDR that are fucking clinically schizophrenic. As a matter of fact, now that oh you wow, it up. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's some real shit, man. Fucking, but uh, you know, we don't we don't discriminate. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he, yeah. He's you know, uh, Raphael is he's really good at the. Uh, at the writing and stuff, you know, like the way he's coming out, he's 
technically written like a whole, a whole other album as far as lyric content is concerned. Um, so, you know, it's going to be quite easy, you know, once we, uh, once we get all the music together to be like, okay, you know, if we need lyrics, well, they're there already, kind of, you know. We just need like a couple of titles here and there, and, you know, the, so the album is almost, you know, I think that for the most part, that's, that's almost like the hard part, you know, coming up with topics and lyrics, you know, because, I mean, writing is just really, you know, uh, at least for me, you know, uh, playing guitar and writing the riffs, you know, it, it's not, too difficult, you know, you can, you can kind of, you know, formulate a good idea, you know, without getting like super technical with riffs and stuff, you know, uh, and just keeping it, you know, keeping it good and formulaic, uh, you can come up with some decent stuff, so it's not that hard, but I think the titles and lyrics are, are more difficult, and, you know, thank goodness that he, he's already got most of those in line for that, you know, Very, yeah, so it should be good, yeah. That's cool, man. As far as uh, the live show goes, man, what, what, how would you describe a live show of Asphyxiator? Like, what, what is that like? Um, well, um, for the most part, you know, like when we when we went into it, um, you know, people always have this. Um, you know, back back in the day, you know, the uh, you know, bands without drummers are frowned upon. You know, it was like, oh, there's no drummer, uh, you know, so that type of thing. So it's almost like you have to, you know, you have to exert yourself a little bit more, like, you know, give the people a little bit more intensity than, in, you know, they normally would, you know, because you're, you're trying to compensate for not having mm -hmm. a, a visual up there, you know what I mean? So you don't have a visual drummer, but you're getting, you're getting the beats coming out through the PA anyways, you know? Um, so as far as like energy, you know, you have to, you know, move around a little bit more, you have to be more... Um, you know, more intense, you know, uh, more passionate in your playing, you know, to, to get that feeling across to the, to the folks, you know. Um, I think every single time that we've done it, uh, even in, in the very, I think the first couple of shows was, I think people were like, well, you know, they had seen all the incarnations of the Six Theater with different members. Uh, who were not really, they weren't really into it as much as me and Raphael are. I think the people that Miguel had in the band before was just kind of like filler. So people that would just go up there and be like, well, we'll just kind of, you know, you, you hit play on the drum machine and we'll just kind of like, we'll come up with something, you know, and very, very loose, very unrehearsed. Uh, so it, it, it really, in my opinion, didn't come off that well. You know, a little people still dug it. It didn't come off as well. That's how now how we're doing it, you know. What I mean, because I I think being in the project, uh, we're taking the mentality of a band. So we actually like okay. So we got the songs. We we, we rehearse the songs. Um, we practice it, you know, as as if we had a real drummer, you know, so that we're we're tight with the songs, and then the more and we're actually performing like kind of like what would be like a live situation, you know. So we're we're tweaking it to take it further so that, that, that it looks better and that we're not just kind of fumbling around um, so that we're on time, that we're finishing on time, and, you know, then, then, then we're delivering a, a solid performance. So I think the very first time people were just kind of, they were wondering that we're going to get the same thing where it was like, okay, so here's another, yet another incarnation of this project. You know, how are they going to do it, you know? And I think once we play that first show, people got the feeling of it and they were like you know the response was like oh wow you know this is way different you know you guys you know make different you know like it's definitely not a joke now you guys aren't just fumbling around you guys were rehearsed you know so I think it put you know at least for the people that were there put the whole issue of just drum machine thing out of their minds they're like hey you know what you guys did you know you guys did good you know fucking a lot better than what you know, we had heard before and that's what we like. And uh, we just kind of build it on that, you know. And uh, we just kept playing shows in the same fashion where we're like, okay, we're going to rehearse it as if, you know, we're a real band. Um, we're going to, you know, deliver intensity just, you know, like we would, with, you know, with a full project. And, 
you know, to be honest, it's it's been really good. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we're going up against uh, bands with drummers and like really good drummers too. On top of it, you know, like um, you know, some of the shows are playing with Gorgasm and Devourment, and you know, these are these are the drummers in those bands are fucking amazing. You know, so we gotta play. You know, we we gotta play our band with no drummer, <laughs> and somehow you know keep the same level of intensity. You know, up there. Uh, and, and deliver that same amount of intensity to the people, and I, you know, I think that so far we've been we've been doing it pretty good, you know, as far as that aspect is concerned. So for the most part, the response has always been, you know, great. Uh, we've never really had a a bad experience or anything like that, you know. Um, but I think like moving forward, I want to push to have to have a real drums in there, you know, just to you know bring a, a whole other thing to the table as opposed to just the same performance again, you know. So new drummer, you know, new songs, you know, I think uh, I think we're heading in the in the right direction for the most part, you know. Hell yeah, dude. And as far as your, uh, your the local scene where you guys are from, how, how would you describe that as far as uh, metal is concerned? Okay, well, in our area, in our Chicago, um, the, um, the major acts, you know, say like the international uh, bands, um, regional bands, you know, um, they get, uh, you know, they get heavy support, you know, when they come through. Uh, as far as locally, that, that's kind of rough, you know, it's it's, it's really rough. Um, and um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I think there's a, a variety of reasons as to why there might be low turnouts, and you know. Um, uh, I think a big part of it is that, you know, our city has a lot going on, you know, so let's first say, for example, you know, if you're coming through on Friday, Saturday, or even a Sunday, man, you have like four, five, six different things going on, you know, all in that one period, you know, uh, <clears throat> maybe winter, not so much, but then, you know, there aren't too many bands coming through. They're, you know, traveling around in the winter time. So, <clears throat> but the rest of the season, you know, summer t- summertime. I mean, it's rough, man. You know, unless unless you're on a bill with, with a bigger band, um, your draw isn't going to be that great. You know, uh, it's just very slim. Um, you you really have to be, you know, contending that like, okay, so there's a venue, you know nearby that's having a, a, a death metal show and don't you know you know maybe like you know 10 miles away maybe less there's another death metal show and then there might be another one in the suburbs somewhere you know what i mean so it's like all in one night so then you know the, the people that you know are there they're you know which are scarce you know are going to be like well which one do we go to you know what i mean or, or, or they're just going to pick one and go to that you know so you're you're kind of spreading it out, you know, so the, the turnout is low, you know. Um, and, you know, there's, there's just a lot happening in Chicago. So, um, but, you know, the bigger shows, you know, uh, those are good, you know. Uh, I think a lot of locals, you know, as I think as anywhere else, you know, would try to get on the, you know, the bigger shows, you know, because that's your best, your best chance for people to come out, you know, um, Right now, like, Reggie's is one of the main places at the time right now where a lot of shows are coming through. Um, that one, uh, the Bottom Lounge, the Empty Bottle, uh, a couple of smaller ones like Live Wire, the Underground Lounge. Um, the place where we're, uh, we're doing this festival, as called, it's a brand new place, it's called Wire. Uh, and that's one of the suburbs in this area. And um, that's probably one of the better venues and I think because it's a festival you know it's going to be a killer turnout so last year was a, a fucking in, was just insane it was fucking huge you know but you know a lot of it has to do with is there's a lot of international and regional bands playing this festival so you got a lot of people flying in from different states you know so this is the thing to do so they're out there um you know kind of vacationing you know type of thing where people are staying for the for the three days of the festival you know so it's big uh, but beyond that, you know, say like, if say like next weekend you go and, uh, you play a local show, you're not going to have 
anywhere near the same turnout, you know, it's going to be pretty small, you know. I mean, I don't know if it is like that around where you guys are at, but that's how it is around here, you know. It's just, I guess it's a matter of luck, too, you know. You just, you just got to know, know when, when and where to, you know, to be pick and choosy as to when you play, you know. I mean, we don't play too many shows, um, so it's not a big deal. But as, say, if your band likes to play, like you know, every month, uh, you know, it's gonna be some some shows are gonna be rough. You know, you're not gonna have a good turnout sometimes. You know, but yeah, uh, that's just kind of how it goes. You know. Right on, man. Well, another question I got for you guys: uh, How did you come up with, or how did you guys get connected with Cat and the Obscure Chaos uh, Zine fucking compilation and shit? Hmm. Well, that goes back to um, a zine called uh, um, Erotic Asphyxiation. Um, yes. With uh, Dave Wolf. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I've known him <laughs> online for. Oh boy, for a long freaking time, man. Since since MySpace days, that's how long I've known him. <laughs> and um, you know, he, um, now me and him have been like doing trades, and uh, I used to uh, do reviews for him. And somewhere along the way, when uh, Facebook came along, he he sent me uh, a thing for Kat, you know, to, uh, to chat with her, and it's just, she had Obscure Chaos scene, I was like, okay, cool, you know, and, um, there were, you know, she was looking for people to do reviews, and so, so I kind of, I dabbled in that, uh, to Dave, and that's how I got to, that's how I got introduced to Obscure Chaos scene, and, um, you know, promotional-wise, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, reposting stuff and uh, doing some trades. Uh, that's pretty much how I got to know got to know her and then I um, I got in the, the mess message uh, as far as the compilation was concerned. Um, I, think we were, I think we were one of the first bands to send out the the, uh, the song tracks through email and stuff like that. And um, that, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if Obscure Chaos Scene has done any like hard copies or anything like that of like the scene itself. I know it's mostly been like online, I think. And uh, I think the the compilation is kind of like the first like of it. I don't. I don't. I don't think there's been one before that. So this is the first one. Um, and I, I think it's a good idea. You know, it looks like a lot of hard work and effort went into it. So you know, very happy to be to be part of it. And it seems to be, you know, it got a lot of, a lot of good promotion too. You know, I know that there's a lot, a couple other uh, radio shows that are been promoting it and stuff like that, you know, and I've seen it, I've seen it in a couple of different sites too. So yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked about it. I'm glad. Hell Thanks yeah, for, dude. Thanks for what you guys have done too, for helping the band, <laughs> you know, cause it's rough, you know, it's kind of rough to try to do it on your own, you know? Yeah. I hear you, dude. I hear you. Yeah. Well, for people out there that, uh, want to check out more about your band and shit, what kind of, uh, band links or anything, where can they go to find out more information, get some merch or anything like that? Well, like, like most bands, uh, you know, the Facebook is like probably the, the number one, uh, place to go. Uh, so it'll be a Sphyxiator, uh, Sphyxiator Slam, uh, at Facebook, um, or they can go to Bandcamp uh, and look up Asphyxiator on Bandcamp, and we, we it'll come up. Uh, our albums, uh, our first album is on there, and then uh, there's two other promotional um, uh, things that we did before the album that are up there for so people if they want to download it. You know, so those those two are the, the main places where you can go to seek us out. You know, right on, dude. All right, well, uh, Frank, I'm about out of questions for you. Uh, is there anything else you want to add to let the people out there know, man? Um, yeah, man. You know, like uh, we want to uh, bring a, a killer live performance. Uh, we want to. We got some more new music coming up uh, that we're working on. Um, a lot of 
good things on the horizon, and uh, I want to thank Cap Racket, uh, yourself, and, and uh, the radio show for having us on. Uh, we really appreciate your support and everything you're doing for the underground. Uh, it means a lot to us. Fuck yeah, dude. Anytime, man. Anytime. Well, before I let you go, Frank, I got to get you to make us a station tag. Cool? Yeah, man. Um, All right. Okay. Whenever, yeah, you, but... whenever you're ready, just say something like, this is Frank from Asphyxiator, and you are listening to Metal Devastation Radio. All right, man. This is uh, Frank from Asphyxiator, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Fuck yeah, dude. Got it. Thanks, man. All right, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is blast some fucking asphyxiator in these motherfuckers' eardrums. And make them fucking bleed, dude. (laughs) Killer, man. Thanks a lot, bro. Take it easy, dude. And we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, man. All right. Later, bro. Later. There you have it, folks. Asphyxiator live on Metal Devastation Motherfucking Radio. I'm Zach Moonshine. And this is Asphyxiator. Crank it the fuck up and make your fucking neighbors fucking hate you. Seriously. Seriously.